Hey everyone, uh, so yesterday I talked through creating a simple React app for the web and um, compiling the code on the fly, uh, but that's not the best way to do it in production. Usually you would want to compile your code before you run it in the browser using things like Webpack and Babel. So today I just wanted to do a really quick walkthrough of how to use Webpack in Babel uh, to compile your code so that you can run it in the browser. Uh, so the reason that you need to compile your code is React uses its own syntax called JSX and it's it's React's own version of HTML, basically. Um, and it also uses a lot of ES6 syntax, which is the newer version of JavaScript, which still isn't fully supported by all of the different browsers. So before you can run your React code, you need to compile both that, the, that JSX language and also any ES6 syntax back down to ES5 so that the browser can run it. So this was the HTML file that I had yesterday. I've moved some things around since then. Uh, this was the script tag that I was using yesterday, this Cloudflare script tag that I was using to compile the code when I reloaded the page rather than running it through Webpack to compile it and bundle it before I ran it in the browser. Uh, and I had previously a script tag at the bottom of this HTML underneath um, the div, but still inside the body tags, which had all of my React uh, code inside it. And I split that off into its own file now, and I've just required that here. Um, so this was some of the React code that I had yesterday. So you can see that I had this person object. It was called user yesterday, but I changed the name of it just to avoid a bit of confusion, which I'll explain later on. So this is a person object containing the first name and last name keys with my name, Jill Robinson, inside. And this is the element that I was rendering yesterday called element, which was just a simple H1 JSX element, um, which took uh, the phrase hello and then called on the format name function and passed in user, which was this person object uh, into the function to format the name correctly for the page. So um, I also split this format name function off into its own file just to kind of avoid, avoid a bit of confusion, uh, as well as also uh, moving this JSX element into its own file. So the JSX element is now in a .jsx file called app.jsx over here. Um, and we've changed things around a little bit. So we've imported React and also importing this format name function up here. Import is like the ES6 version of require. It's just the ES6 syntax for requiring a file or a, a function or something. So the format name function has gone into this util.js file over here. Um, again, Export is just like the ES6 version of module export. So you just put export in front of the function and it means it just exports this function. Um, if I wanted to, I could write other functions in this same file underneath and put export in front of them. And then when I want to require those functions, rather than requiring the whole file, you put them inside these curly braces that you see a lot in JavaScript. Um, it just means that you're just importing that one function. If I wanted to import more than one function, I could just put comma and then, you know, function B, comma, function C, whatever the names were, just so that I could uh, require additional functions. Okay, so um, I'm exporting this JSX element from this app.jsx file. Um, it's basically the same as it was before, just an H1 inside a div, it says hello and then it calls the format name function and it's passing in this time this dot props dot user. And the reason for this is because this has been split off into a separate file. It means when we go back to the react test JS file, uh, when we render, we're rendering this app element, which is here. So when you're exporting this JSX element with the hello Jill Robinson in it, um, it's because it's a class called app, which is basically a JSX uh, HTML-like component. So you're exporting this app component um, into this React test JS file, um, and then we're rendering that app component just like an HTML, so you have the open and closing tags, and then you're passing in um, 
the uh, the required person object into the function that you're using um, here, the, the format name function, uh, as part of the props of the, the element. So you can pass something called this.props into your element when you render it. So that allows us to inject some JavaScript into it. So in this case, we're just injecting this person object. Um, and I called it person just so that it didn't say user equals user because it's a bit confusing. So you can see where it's coming from. So here we have this.props.user is being passed into format name. And then you can see here, user is this.props.user and that's equal to this person object. And then again, just as yesterday, we're doing get lml by id container, um, which was shown in the HTML file here, id container, and that's our target container for changing um, the the content of that div on the on the page. So um, before we can run any of the code, we need to both compile it and bundle it. So I explained before that you have to compile your code from ES6 and React syntax, syntax down to ES5 before you can run it on the browser. Um, you also you, you use uh, Babel to compile your code back down to ES5, but then you can also use Webpack to bundle your code before you run it in the browser. So what that means is any of these files where it has things like import from a different file what Webpack does is combines all of those into one file so that you don't have multiple files that the browser is having to load, which slows things down. It means everything is in one file. It's being compiled down to ES5 so the browser can read it and all of your imports or the code that you need is all there and the browser can access it really quickly. So um, in order to use Webpack and Babel together, um, uh, we had to install them first. So if you look at my package.json file, um, I've installed um, React and React DOM with NPM. I did that yesterday as part of my dependencies. Um, but I also have a load of different files here that I've installed as part of my dev dependencies. So dependencies are just things that you would need to run the code if you just wanted to, say, pull the code from GitHub and run it. You just need React and React DOM and you could just NPM install those so that you could run your code. Dev dependencies are a bit different. Those are kind of needed more if you want to change the code or if you want to build it yourself in any way. So you would need all of these other dev dependencies in order to, um, to build the code yourself if you were pulling it from GitHub and you wanted to change something. So if you want to npm install something and just save it as a normal dependency in a package.json file, you would just do npm install react or react dom dash dash save and that'll save it as a dependency. If you want to save it as a dev dependency, you would have to do npm install webpack dash dash save dash dev so that it'll save it as a dev dependency. So uh, the things that I've saved as dev dependencies here are webpack and webpack dev server. I also have these four different Babel modules called Babel Core, Babel Loader, Babel Preset ES 2015, which is uh, allows Babel to target the ES 2015, which is the same as ES 6 JavaScript code. Um, and also Babel Preset React, which allows it to target the React JS X syntax. And then also um, Gulp and Gulp Webpack, which I'll explain in a minute. So once I have all of those different files installed, um, I have to configure Webpack and configure Gulp as well. So I'm using Gulp um, in order to basically run Webpack and Babel. Um, what Gulp allows you to do is um, so, so the way that you have to compile and bundle your code is you call on Gulp, which calls Webpack, which calls Babel. Babel compiles your code, passes that back to Webpack, which then bundles your code together and then passes it back to Gulp, which will save it in your destination folder as a bundled file that you can then require um, in a script tag on your HTML file. Like you can see, I've done here react test bundle.js. This is my bundled compiled code. Um, 
Gulp is a good thing to use rather than just using Webpack directly because it means that you can also run something like ESLint on your code before you bundle your code. Um, I'm going to go through ESLint tomorrow, but what it basically does is checks your code for any errors, any places where you're using variables that you haven't defined properly or that you've kind of, um, that you've, uh, what's the best way to describe it? Variables that you have maybe used the name of twice and you haven't realized or that you've reassigned and they're constants and you can't do that and it will error out. Um, and running gulp and using ESLint beforehand means that if your code errors in ESLint, it won't automatically go to Webpack and bundle the code if there's an error with it. It means that you can run gulp and run ESLint and then if there's an error it will stop and it won't send your code to be bundled otherwise you would end up with bundled code that has errors in it that won't won't run. Okay so um, if I go to this um, file you have to create um, a gulp file.js in order to configure gulp to use. Um, so I've had to require webpack and also require this um, webpack.config.js file um, as well, which I'll go through in a minute. You have to pass this file to Gulp so that it, it knows what to do with the code once it passes it to Webpack. So Gulp um, calls, oh sorry, Gulp finds the file that you're targeting. So it's this .src, the source. So it goes to reacttest.js. That's where my JavaScript code is. And then it passes that on to Webpack. And then you pass, when you call Webpack, you pass it this Webpack config file. So if we look in this file, all that this does is um, it tells Webpack where it wants the bundled code to be placed. So react test bundle.js. Um, and it also um, specifies the loaders that you're using for, um, for, comp uh, sorry, for transpiling your code. Um, and different loaders can be found in the Webpack documentation to, um, if, so if you need to compile CSS um, or JavaScript, JS, JSX files, then you can find different loaders in the Webpack documentation. Okay, so um, once Webpack bundles your code, it outputs it in this um, bundle.js file. Uh, and once Gulp gets that bundled file back, it sends it to this dist folder, which is the destination for your um, bundled code, basically. So it's quite a lot to take in. <laughs> Basically, calling on Gulp calls on Webpack, which calls on Babel. Babel compiles your code down to ES5. Webpack bundles all of your code together um, and then passes it back to Gulp. And that outputs it as this um, bundled code here, which looks quite confusing. But then you can then just require this bundled code um, in your script tag to use your React script in your HTML. And then all you need to do in order to uh, compile your code and do all of this confusing Gulp Webpack stuff is if you've downloaded um, an NPM module called Gulp Webpack, all you need to do is type the command Gulp Webpack. And if we enter, it should just compile all of the code and there we go, it tells you how long it took to compile the code. And if you go to your browser and just open the HTML file, then you can see it has the, the, the JSX, the React element here. It didn't show much because I forgot to change the name, but if I go back um, and I change the name of the person, um, I'll use my partner's name again save the file and then you have to remember that you have to recompile your code before you can refresh the browser otherwise it won't show any changes. So if we go back uh, and then reload the page so it changes the name. Uh, so that's all you need to know um, if you're wanting to compile your React code to use in the browser um, and I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for listening.